Now, let me not bore you with the details, okay? But to quickly summarize where we're at, NSO Plus Expansion Pack, or the NSO Expansion Pack, look man, this is a terrible branding name, and I, I don't know what Nintendo was thinking about, honestly, it's very confusing. But this expansion pack released this Monday to a very negative response. Reports of input lag, bad emulation, bad online connection stability, audio lag, amongst many other video game sins. However, reports have been a little varied across the board. While people claim this service is terrible and the emulation efforts leave a lot to be desired, there's others claiming games such as Star Fox 64 and Mario Tennis run smoothly, without taking into account the obvious lack of button mapping options. I'm, I'm not gonna excuse that, that is just lazy. We know NSO uses emulation, much like we found out Super Mario 3D All-Stars was doing. However, reports of input delay on the NSO expansion pack have been compared to original hardware, for example. And honestly, I think you're comparing apples to oranges at that point. Emulation, original hardware, like, I don't know, I don't think they're necessarily a good comparison. In order to be fully accurate, we need to compare it to other emulation methods. And if I'm anything other than useless, I'll be able to successfully determine just how bad, for example, input lag is on the NSO's iteration of an N64 game emulator. Now, what I'm trying to do with this video is to give you my unbiased opinion. I've been playing NSO Plus for a while now, and honestly, I can tell you right here, right now, the issues are very apparent, but at the same time, I think they're blown out of proportion. I'll be using the best method available to me as I'll be using a modern screen rather than a CRT, for example, to compare the original hardware with this NSO N64 emulator. I will, however, be able to compare the NSO Plus app alongside up-to-date emulation software on a modern 144 Hz display, as well as other iterations in which you can play some of these N64 games, which is the 3DS, for example. First up, let's compare the NSO Plus with a modern day emulator. I use the Project 64. Now, I will say right off the bat, it is extremely easy to install an emulator. I'm not saying you go ahead and do that because the legality behind it is a little, is a little bit of a gray area. Now, I'm not saying that you should go ahead and emulate games. As far as uh, preservation, yeah, it's a good thing for preservation. And yes, it's a good thing for accessibility to people who might not, might not have access to original hardware. So it is a good way to discover new games. That, I mean, well, discover new games that are old games in essence. Like I can really do tell there's a little bit of an input delay as soon as I hit the button. It's hit, hit, hit. So, no funny business there. I did not really see a big difference in input delay, in audio delay, in frame rate. If anything, um, the emulator did run a little bit, a tad bit smoother, and I will give the emulator an advantage over the NSO emulator. It does look a little bit smoother. Now, Everything else is pretty much comparable from what I've played so far. Input delay was pretty much the same. Audio delays, I didn't, ex I didn't experience any audio delays during my whole gameplay. And to be honest, I think the biggest issue with the NSO emulation is the lack of options, the lack of take, being able to take off that ugly ugly border but i didn't see any other issues with it secondly comparing the nso expansion pack with original hardware with the n64 and taking into account that a modern display show the original hardware there's already going to be some obvious delays in the whole process of turning the analog video signal into a digital video signal and then being able to see it through my monitor however the original hardware proved to have zero to non-existent input delay of course it's probably the worst looking out of the three iterations of this uh, ocarina of time video game so it, i mean does it really 
it, if you're looking for a smooth gameplay you would necessarily you would probably want to go with the emulation side whether that be project 64 for example or nso expansion pack it's up to you original hardware looks terrible obviously i'm using a modern display these old consoles are designed were designed to be displayed on a crt television for example i don't have access to that so a lot of the the visuals that come out from an old console are meant to be interpreted by a CRT screen and then on a CRT screen it may not look as terrible as it does on my 1920 by 1080 144 hertz display and lastly do i think nso is the best way to play some of these n64 games of course not there's iterations there's remakes there's remasters of some of these n64 games if i were to give you a recommendation i think that's the best way for you to enjoy some of these old classic games that you can play in more modern consoles and experience them in a way better method however i do believe that nso expansion pack debacle that happened online was blown out of proportion yes the pricing is a little bit steep i'm not gonna lie it's more than double the price i will never excuse a company being that greedy but at the same time i hate to say it. nintendo is a for-profit company they're not a charity they are not here to deal give out deals and nintendo knows this nintendo knows that their biggest strength is their ip people are going to want to play these old games these old n64 games additionally i feel a lot of people debating whether at the nso expansion pack is worth it forget who is actually the core audience of nintendo casual gamers it's casual gamers it's families it, it's kids as much as we like to think in for example our little twitter gaming bubble that nintendo caters to people my age anywhere between 20 to 35 years old it's, it's a it's, it's a little misguided you got to look at it at this business perspective there's parents right now that grew up with n64 and their kid is playing nintendo switch they already got a nintendo switch they see n64 pop up in nintendo switch hey 50 dollars for a family is not a lot of money especially when you divide it two three way four way it's honestly less than four dollars a month in my opinion i think it is very worth it but because i did grow up with the n64 i still said i still have the original hardware and i have a pretty not extensive but it's a pretty decent collection of n64 games now i want to drive home the point that again worth is very much subjective i understand people wanting better because of course the price tag as i already said is at an exclusive range but again this thing which may be worth for some is completely optional and not at all being forced upon the consumer. You can still stay on your $20 a year NSO subscription plan. Of course, you just don't get access to Sega Genesis games and Nintendo 64 games and including the DLC coming out for the Animal Crossing New Horizons DLC. I'm not saying it's right, but I'm saying that I understand it. All in all, if you didn't grow up with N64 games or you don't much care for them, your best bet is to save your money and I don't know, get Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl because apparently that's not a ripoff. I don't know, man. Things cost money. Have fun emulating either through NSO or through your own means. I mean, the world is your oyster, but I'm just trying to say that yes, the service could do, could do with some work. It's not as bad as people keep on saying on, for example, Twitter. But at the same time, we all know Twitter is an echo chamber and no discussion, no formal discussions can be had on that side. But folks, you let me know, are you excited now that especially that there's been reports that there's gonna be up to almost 38 games coming for the Nintendo 64 expansion pack for the NSO app. There's been some data mining going on. I'll probably report it on the next search and report. I don't wanna kinda bite the bullet and, and you know, miss some details on it but there are but it's pretty obvious that there's going to be some more n64 games and sega genesis games maybe another console being added to the nso app are you excited for that do you think what do you think is the threshold for you to say okay now this is worth it this ed subscription now is worth the 50 dollars or the 80 dollars if you're on the family plan what is that threshold i really want to know but folks i've been true for any if you like this video go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you didn't like this video go ahead and give it a thumbs down as you can already tell 
my other Nintendo NSL expansion pack video did pretty terribly in the like to dislike ratio, even though I was, I think I was being pretty fair, but hey, this is the internet, man. Once you post something out there, people are gonna comment on it. But additionally, you know, make sure to follow me on this, all this social media crap that is just destroying discourse, gaming discourse online. Follow me on Twitter where I spend most of my waking hours and where you might be able to reach me a lot quicker. Also make sure to follow me on Twitch and you know drop me a subscribe if you're oh so generous and oh so kind um, because your support over there is greatly, greatly appreciated. Also make sure to join our Discord server where we talk anything and everything gaming, anime, TVs, movies, anything that you might enjoy as my viewer. Also, I have a weekly podcast. If you didn't know, you can listen to it on Spotify. Just search for Search and Report. Our logo is a little Game Boy with the word Search and Report up on top. Folks, please take care of each other. But most importantly, take care of yourself. NSO app. Just, just don't buy it if you don't want to. Honestly, it's not that big of a deal. Bye.